Hello everybody, today we'll be going over how I gave my cheap, crusty interior doors a complete revamp. If you've ever wanted to refinish your doors and breathe a little life into them without having to drop thousands on brand new doors for your whole house, this video may be helpful for you. Here's some pictures of the initial state. We've got some boring, dilapidated doors which look cheap and need an uplift. I've got 15 of them total, some sliding, some hinged, all of them hollow core with boring flat oak surfaces with no panels or decorative elements. We're not just going to be painting them, we'll actually make these things look a little bit more expensive by making them look like modern five panel doors. My beautiful artistic rendering here on the right, backed by graduate level math, shows how we'll end up routing horizontal grooves every 16 inches starting from the top. We'll sand, paint, and add new hardware along the journey. Quick disclaimer, this is the first video I've ever made, so please excuse the poor production quality. I accidentally filmed this whole thing in vertical orientation. I promise to improve with each video, but for now, we're sticking to our namesake as below average DIY. I don't have a ton of experience with home improvement projects, so we'll be learning together along the way. Let me know what you think I can do to improve, both in the video content and if there's anything that you might have done differently in the project itself. Let's get to it. We'll start off taking the doors down off the hinges. This can easily be a one person job, though long arms are certainly helpful here. I just use my foot to support the door as I take it off the hinges, but pretty easy. All you need is a drill. As soon as you take them down, I highly recommend lab labeling them on top if you're doing more than one door in your project. I had 15 total I need to keep track of, and I'm only routing the fake panels on the front side, so I need to keep that straight. Next, we'll take off the door hardware. Be careful not to chip or damage the surface in the process. I definitely nicked the surface a few times. And now we're getting into sanding. I started off with a belt sander. I later moved to an orbital sander, which ended up being much better. As you can see here, the belt sander was a little bit too powerful and abrasive and left linear marks across the surface. It wasn't all even. So I switched to using an orbital sander, found it gave a far more consistent finish I believe I used 220 grit sandpaper on the surfaces and all edges here. I then marked out my measurements starting from the top from each door for routing the horizontal grooves. I did it every 16 inches plus a two inch starting offset to account for the edge of the router, which I'll show you in a second. This is my router setup. I'm using an eighth inch bit and the two inch offset in our measurements is needed because of this gap between the router bit itself and the edge of the router, which will run along the straight edge. Notice the depth of the router bit here. It's barely sticking out of the edge of the router, about a 16th of an inch. Since these are hollow core doors, you don't have much room for error and can easily cut holes through your door surface if you're not careful, so start small. Here I am routing the first groove. It went pretty smoothly overall with minimal chipped or rough edges. Um, I debated making a template so I didn't have to keep adjusting my straight edge here, but the routing was actually one of the fastest parts of this entire project. So I just measured out each door every single time, starting from the top and reclamped my straight edge for each new groove. And after a quick cleanup, I sanded the grooves uh, just by hand with some sandpaper to make them look nice and smooth, natural. And once those are good to go, I patched a few chipped edges with wood filler. There weren't too many, but just rubbed a little wood filler in there and let it dry. Please excuse me as I lose bodily control for a moment. Now that we got that out of our system, we've got some routed and sanded doors ready to be painted. I used the bare kitchen bath and trim primer and a six inch roller with smooth surface quarter inch nap for most of my painting. Painting was the most boring and longest activity of this entire project, so I'll spare you for most of it. But I did two heavy coats of primer using a brush in the grooves that I routed first and then rolling over the top 
A few tips, be careful with dripping down the sides, especially coming out of the ends of those grooves. I was getting a bunch of paint drips, so I checked every few hours and just wiped those off if they were forming, which is much easier than sanding them down after the fact. So here we've got some prime doors ready to go. Pro tip, make sure to take over your entire living room and cover your body with paint to make sure that your project is successful. Now for the top coat, I use the bare semi-gloss enamel in white. I first did a top coat of the semi-gloss white as is. This was giving off interrogation room vibes. It was way too bright, so that was a no-go. Then, in the words of my cousin, I tried to get a little too matchy-matchy. I tried to get close to the wall color since I thought that might look nice. I may have been overserved at the time of that reasoning. Then I really went off the rails. Tried a bunch of dark colors like the cool kids these days. That looked awful. And just when all hope was lost, um, I tried mixing in a few ounces of one of our wall colors, which was bare gray envelope with the white semi-gloss. And this actually turned out pretty well, and I went forward with it. So the top coat was finished and it was time to start hanging these bad boys. So I started by mounting the hinges first. If you are a one person show, I found that using a book to try and get the door close to the correct height was helpful. Here I needed to upgrade to a thicker one, which happened to be an excellent read, would recommend. And now we have our first door hanging on hinges. I took a few steps to make the finish look a little less janky. I caulked over some of the gaps in the door frame to make them look cleaner. Cut your caulk at a 45 degree angle so it can flow nicely into your seam, and then use your finger after dispensing to smooth it over. Such a satisfying activity. This is my favorite part of the whole project. I used fine grit sandpaper to polish up some of the imperfections on the doors. There were some bubbles and nicks remaining after painting. I touched these spots up with my top coat paint afterwards. Then I read somewhere online that rubbing a little bit of vegetable oil on your door frame could prevent freshly painted doors from sticking, which so far seems to be working. I'm sure you could use wax or something too. Let me know if you've tried something else. Threw some low profile door stoppers on so I didn't ruin all this work the day after I finished. And now it's onto the doorknobs. For some of the sliding doors, I have these old gold little handle thingies, which I sprayed with satin nickel spray paint. And for the hinge doors, um, ignore the previous door color here, but I experimented with a few different doorknobs. Matte black looked stupid. I then tried some cheap Defiant knobs that were on sale at Home Depot, but they were loud and just felt cheap. So I ended up going with the Quickset Pismo knobs, which looked a little bit more modern and I've liked them so far. So we'll get those knobs installed nice and tightly. And I don't know what this is called. We'll go with door knob receptacle, but I ran into a few issues here. Some of my door knobs, I did a terrible job at capturing this here, but they didn't align perfectly with the space in the door frame. So I had to take a chisel and expand the door frame slot lower to make room and then drilled net new holes for the receptacle thing. Um, and I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. So I tried to force one of them, which didn't perfectly align and ended up cracking the door frame. Tried to take the shortcut, but if your holes are out of alignment, take the time to drill some new ones. Now it's almost time to roll out the not so red carpet, but before the final product, I'll give a quick recap to summarize, just in case you wanna take a screenshot. Here was the general progression of the project. I probably spent between 60 to 70 hours overall, painting being the most time consuming phase, and I spent around $400. Most of that going towards paint and new doorknobs, much better than dropping a few thousand on brand new doors. Now for the more satisfying portion of the video, the big reveal, if only I knew how to take better pictures and footage. We'll save that for next time.
Thank you all for watching today. I hope someone out there was able to learn something beneficial from this video. I've learned so much from watching other people's videos on YouTube, which is the reason I put this thing together. So stay tuned for more videos in the future and let me know what I can do to improve next time. Thanks for your time and hope you have a great day.